One of the most sobering experiences in my practice was um, an elderly gentleman who had appointed his um, eldest son under a power of attorney. The eldest son was a Methodist minister. So who would ever expect that a Methodist minister would be stealing from his elderly father using the power of attorney that I drafted? And this came to light. Um, It is an example of how anybody is a possible perpetrator of elder financial abuse. When it came to light, we uh, basically took all of the elders' assets and funded a living trust with them. When you say we, who was the we that did that? So we, uh, me, and the uh, reverend who was actually, um, once he was caught, he was, you know, very repentant and agreed using the power of attorney Get, to getting fi- caught will do that too. Yeah. Right to facilitate the funding of a trust, and we had a professional trustee at the helm holding the purse strings, and um, that is the way this individual's assets were managed up to the date of his death. So it was a good and a bad story. How did he get caught? Um, See, uh, actually, his older sister finked on him because she saw him getting all these resources and she wanted in on the action as well. And so she... And and was was there, uh, was he able to uh, compensate, uh, reimburse his, his elderly parent for what he had done? So one of the reasons that people steal money from elders is they don't have money of their own. And so, no, and we felt it was a win just to be able to stem the hemorrhage of funding and um, prevent both of the adult children from being able to do that. And, And with a professional trustee in charge of his affairs, there was the full disclosure that you indicate, Craig, everybody knew what was being um, used from the trust for what purpose. And um, he finally died, and now they're going to get to divide up what's left.